Hello, so today we're going to be taking a look at an Israeli Galil. This is deactivated, hence why I have it in the UK. So sadly it's deactivated, I'd love a live one, but um, you know, so the Galil is quite an interesting rifle. Now if you want sort of a full history video on it, Forgotten Weapons has a very good Galil video. But basically what this is, is um, Israel's sort of Romain sort of service rifle they used between about, I think it was the 1970s, late 70s and the sort of mid 90s and then at that point it started being replaced by the Devor. And what the Galil essentially is, is a 5.56 version, although they did do other variants in different calibers, of an AK, um, sort of an AKM. So it's basically, you take an AK, you massively improve it, and you make it in a load of different calibers. So the history of it, um, I'll just unfold the stock so you can see it unfolded. So this particular version is what's called a Galil SAR, I believe. I think it's something like short automatic rifle. And this is the carbine variant. So as you can see, quite a short little barrel on this. Doesn't have the bipod like the bigger Galils have, but has the same foul style so, uh, folding stock. So you unfold that, and you've got a very good sort of folding stock. Um, that you know is very comfortable and you can properly cheek weld with. So all around a very good rifle. I won't take the dust cover off on this video because it's really difficult to get back on because how they've deactivated it they don't sort of slot back in properly. But as you can see if I take the magazine out, which I'm doing a bit awkwardly, but it's got a nice big if I actually press the magazine release would help, which I'm somehow not managing to do. That's weird. Be help. Maybe it's because it's meant to be, ah it's because it's designed to only be nubbed by your right hand. So yeah, 556 mag as you can see there, but shaped quite a lot like an AK mag, not exactly the same, and uses the AK's rock in sort of magazine system. Which again, when you try and show on camera, never works real. There you go. So this way, this one's deactivated, you can't move the charging handle, but it's the same charging handle as an AK that you just pull back there. It's just it sticks up more so um, you can do it, you know, with either hand, which is the idea behind it. Now the safety is interesting. So the safety looks the same as the AK on this side where you obviously got safe, semi, or fully auto. Not sure which way around the fully auto and semi are on this. But what you'll notice, interestingly, is you've got an ambidextrous one. So you can move the safety on either hand. And what happens is when you're moving it with this hand, as you can see, it actually moves the safety on that side. So that's cool, because it's the AK system, but you can actually do it with your thumb on your right hand, which is actually quite cool, rather than having to lean across and do it like that. So, that's cool. So, the Galil, as said, is basically an improved AK internally. And again, there's a very good Forgotten Weapons video where he goes through all the parts. Now, the sights are much better on the Galil. Um, to just try and show you what they essentially are. Are sort of much better peep sights on than the AK has. And they're mounted on the rear receiver. Now, some of them have night sights. This version doesn't. Um, it just has the sort of 500 meter and the 300 meter sight ring. And then you can windage adjust the front sight using a screwdriver where it goes and clicks. So I've got that sort of centralised. But again, this gun's not going to shoot, so that doesn't matter. So anyway, there's the Galil. So let's do the brief history of it. So although they didn't look exactly like this, Israel, um, sort of prior to the Six Day War and everything, was using FAWs. Um, and the FAW is a very good rifle, obviously the right arm of the free world. The main gun being used against sort of the commies. Um, but when they were fighting the Egyptians and the Syrians and everyone else, they captured a lot of AKs, uh, AKMs, I assume. And the Israelis really liked how well they worked, because they're actually, obviously, really good, reliable guns, AKs, even if, you know, they're not the most precise things in the world. But again, they're still a competent shooter, can still do very well with an AK. But what the Israelis did was they decided, let's backwards engineer them and kind of mess about with them um, and come up with our own things. Obviously, this was the rifle they were using, or a very similar version to it and they were coming up against AKs. And obviously this is an RPK rather than standard AK, but as you can see, exact same um, sort of fire selector, same magazine release, very very similar gun essentially, the AKs as a family, to what the Galil would become. So they got loads of these, captured them, they bought some licensed ones from Finland apparently, and then they you know started messing about with them until they came up with a design they liked, and that design was the Galil. But rather than using the Soviet 7.62x39mm or using 7.62 NATO in their own service, they use 5.56. Now I believe you can get the Galil in both those calibers, you know, for export markets and whatever else. But the primary Galils were made in 5.56. And it's kind of crazy how much lighter, you know, and much better a Galil is than a standard AK when it's set up like this. And again, I know I've got... Um, an RPK which is longer and heavier than the standard AK, but you know, this this is a very nice lightweight thing. 
Um, as you can probably see when I was you know, holding it up in comparison to the other guns. So to give you the size difference between these two, pretty insane between, say for example, a Fowl and a Galil. Um, obviously, as I said, this is the Carbine Galil if you add, you know, that on it, you, um, if you had the longer barrel then that would add more thing. So to fold the stock, how it works is, as you can see there, there's basically a big solid catch on the stock. So you have to push this bit down, which again is quite stiff on this one. You push that down and fold it, which I can't really demonstrate very well. Come on. Of course, whenever I want to show something on the video, it never wants to work. But yeah, we're basically, what we're trying to do is pull this bit down without the rest of the gun moving with it. But yeah, it does not want to move now, so just give me a second. I think something's got jammed there. Again, it's deactivated and it's not oiled or anything, so that's probably why. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit stiffer than it should be, but there we go. So, this the mechanism on this is designed so it's much easier to unfold and quickly use than um, fold, obviously. You can shoot it like this because you'll notice, um, if you look there, now, obviously, the ejector isn't going to be blocked by this, so the gun fully functions, so you could use it like this, not that you'd really want to. Um, so for an action movie, that would look cool. But as I said, the folding stock on this isn't the easiest one to quickly fold up, but I guess you're not going to be doing that in combat anyway. You might want to unfold it quickly in combat just by doing that, and then that's ready to go. But yeah, to unfold it, essentially you're pulling the stock downwards this way, and then, obviously folding it, but I said when I try and do it on camera, there we go, uh, seems if you grip it here it's a bit easier, but yeah, the spring's quite tight on this one anyway, and it's that awkward bit of your thumb you have to use which you wouldn't really use for many things, so on some they're probably a lot easier, I have seen a lot of guns like this, not Galil's, where for the folding mechanism they actually have a button depression to fold, which is probably a better design than um, you know, this one, again, this is a design from like the 1950s because the foul, the para fouls use this design. But the good thing, at least with this folding stock, is it is a really good solid folding stock. So you can properly cheek weld with it and get a good side picture. It's not like one of those folding stocks, you know, where you can't cheek weld with it. So this folding stock doesn't really sacrifice usability when it's deployed compared to having a fixed stock. Although, again, they did do fixed stock galils, they're rarer. So, yeah. Really cool gun. Um, obviously, I can't read the Hebrew on the side of it. Um, as you can see, there's Hebrew on it. Um, but yeah, really cool gun. And if you like AKs, the Galil is like a really interesting sort of improved AK variant. If ever the bayonets turn up for a decent price for these, I'll get a Galil bayonet. But none of my current bayonets fit it. Not that you'd expect it to. But sometimes you do find bayonets where they actually use a similar lug system. So the lugs attach even if they, you know, rattle on the barrel or whatever. So anyway... Um, that's the Galil, really cool. Israel used it for quite a long time. Um, they're very popular sort of AK clones. I got this from a site in the UK that I won't be able to link to because of YouTube policies that does deactivated guns. So if you're familiar with some of the U UK deactivated gun sites, look through all of them until you find a Galil that's roughly £325 RRP. Very good service. They did next day delivery when I ordered it on Priority AM delivery, so that was good. You know, bought it and then got it the next day. But yeah, really cool. So, as I said, the Galil is a very nice rifle. Um, you know, I can certainly see why the Israeli troops that use this liked it a lot. Um, but as again said, if you want to see a good in-depth video on it, watch the Forgotten Weapons one, because he goes over the complete sort of design history of it and everything. But in terms of actual, you know, coolness factor, it's an AK but built to better standards and again there's probably very modern AKs that are even better than Galil's are but you know for when this was designed this was a hell of a lot better than standard AKMs you know that is essentially the gun it was inspired by or you know the gun it was backwards engineered from in a sense so if you like your AKs um, here's an anti-communist AK